sharing screen then here it is so these are the attributes we can use the inside of input okay first one is the type is mandatory name is mandatory so if you want to place a placeholder then we can place it so then if you want to automatically populate the values from the database and place it in your inputs then we can place in the value attribute okay so the next one then next one so this is the input so user can enter any data user can enter any data okay so either numbers we can enter either alphabets we can enter so either number uh, text we can enter and numbers we can enter and also we can enter the special characters okay any data we can enter into those inputs so the next element is next element is select select so it defines the multi line input control where is select sorry it defines this sorry it defines a drop down list it mostly used when you have to show the number of items for suppose so we are for suppose we are having a country field. so for the entire globe so we are having the more than 100 countries or i don't know exact number so we are having n number of countries okay so in that country list we have to choose only one okay so we cannot why because we are having the, we have to populate the countries list in the drop down because of we have to store for suppose when i give the input box when i give so input box as a country field so if i give the if i give this one someone is entering so this India, okay. Someone can use the capital I. Someone can use the small I. Okay. So at the time, so it is bit difficult to validate. It is bit difficult to validate. So that's why. So they are providing the drop down. So they are. That's why. So we can use the drop down. Okay. Now, so for select box, so we have to open h4 select box select box so in the h4 then so first we have to open the select so this one also we have to give the unique name we have to give the unique name so then name equal to so this is not a type so only input is having the type so for this select, there is no type. So this is, we are already mentioned, this is a drop down type. Okay. So then name equal to country. Okay. So then next one. So we have to give, we have to give the options, right? So which country they want to choose. Okay. So first one is, first one is, so empty value. Value equal to, value equal to empty. So this one. Choose your country. Choose your country. So then second option. Option. So then India. Here we can give the value. So value equal to India. Okay. So the next option. Option. So then USA. Then value equal to USK. So the next one option UK. So then value equal to UK. <coughs> option. Canada. <coughs> value equal to Canada. Okay. So this way we can we can create a drop down type of form element so then you can see so saving this one see now select box then choose your 
country. So then inside of that one, so we are having this one, India, USA, Canada, UK. Okay, so we can select any of them. So by default, if you want to select, by default, if you want to select a UK, so we have to give the select attribute, selected attribute. So then by default, when we load, so it is by default, UK is selected. Clear? By default, UK is selected. So if you want to select it, then Canada, so then we have to apply this selected attribute to that one, Canada. Okay? So this is the attributes for select box. <coughs> okay? So this is a select box. So the next one is, next form element is text area. For suppose if you want to enter a multi-line text, if you want to submit a message, if you want to send a message to the application owners, we have to give the text area. Okay. So then for that, H4 text area element. Okay, so then text area, so then close text area. So then we have to give the name equal to message. Okay, <clears throat> we have to give the name equal to message and placeholder, placeholder. So we have to give the enter, enter your multi, multi line text. Okay, so then now you can see it here. So this is the draggable element. Okay, so this is a text area is a draggable element. Okay, by default, this is the height and width. If you want to increase the height and width, we have to give the rows 5, 1, column 6. So for suppose a rows equal to 10. Now you can see. Okay. So rows equal to 10. So for suppose if we can increase the columns, so then width will increase. Columns 10. Same. Then you can put it 50. <coughs> okay. So this is the way we can create a we can create text area to enter a multi-line text. So till now we discussed, till now we discussed input box, select a drop down, so then text area. So then another element is, another element is inside select, we are getting the option. So then text area. Then field set and legend. Label we already discussed, right? So label we already discussed. Then field set and label and buttons. These are the HTML elements type. So then button, why we need button? Why we need button? So to submit the input type equal to submit, okay? So then value equal to submit, okay? Or save, okay? So then now you can see, okay? So this is the one. When I submit our data, when we submit our data, so then, so it will go to the, after clicking on this submit button, so it will go to the backend application, backend application can validate that data. So then, so if everything is okay, then it is stored into the database. So if not okay, then it is raising another. Okay, so in this also we are having, so another attribute called, for suppose this one is required. This one is compulsory. We have to submit some value inside of this one. Okay. Now you can see. So we don't have any data here. We have a R required. So as we said, HTML5 is a combination of CSS, JavaScript, and HTML, right? CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. So now, so how JavaScript is included? So till now, so we didn't have, so till now, so we don't have any JavaScript related. Now you can see. So when I submit, it is automatically giving the error. 
please fill out this field but i didn't write any anywhere in javascript okay so it is by default it is saying so it is a mandatory to fill this field so we have to give the a required attribute a required attribute so after filling these two things see now so sorry. so after filling this one so it is asking again this one. so last name is also a mandatory okay these two things i didn't give them i didn't give the mandatory so that's why it is going empty okay so first name and last name and country is canada message is empty okay so then we have to validate that data also so to validate basic validation so we have to give a required attribute clear so the next one is so button we already used so the next one is the field set and legend field set and legend so why field set and legend so for suppose so if you are having a group of elements so that means so our personal when when we fill into a so job portals when we fill our profile into a job portal so all the personal information placed in one place okay all the career related thing all our so study related thing so placed in in one place so that's why we can use the field set the field set element is a is used to group related data group related data in a form so that's why we are using the uh, group, uh, field set that's why we are using the field set so then we can see so now i want to i want to grouping these two elements so then i have to use the field set and close field set here okay so then this is another field set select the box and text area is another field set so now you can see see this one so this one is one field set and this one is one field set so we can give two breaks between these two break and break now you can see so this is one field set and this is one field set okay so then i want to give the label for this field set so what is this field set one what is this field set so this field set is for suppose i have to do the label label or legend legend okay so this name is this field set name is so then personal information okay so here so this field set this field set label is living info okay now you can see so where it is appear so this is appear here okay living info so what happening is the above one sorry i'm giving below of field set now you can see okay so this way we can see if we can give the if we can give the if we can use the field set so then it will appear the border of that grouping element so if you want to name that grouping element so we can how to use the legend okay so these are the form elements we are having in html forms okay so these are the elements we are having so first one is the input second one is the select third one is the so inside select we have to give the options so then after the text area button to submit our data to the back end application we have to use the button so then after that so label so to know the so field field name so we have to use the label so then after that field set and legend field set is used to grouping the fields then legend to give the name of field set then we can use the to give the caption or name okay so the next one is so the next one is we can create one form here we are already created 
so inside of form so till now we are we are we are we are trying to know is so this input html html elements so then inside of attributes right so then now forms so how to transfer how how we can transfer this data to the back end application to transfer the form data to transfer the form data to the back end application back end technology so we are having we can transfer the data in two ways in two ways so one is get method by default so if you want to mention any method name so we can by default it is using the get method okay so you can observe so what get method is doing okay see this one so i am trying to submit nothing is there so you can try to you can check this url the browser url so now i am submitting live tracks okay now i am selecting the country india so then try me initiate okay okay i'm submitting this one right so now i am submitting so there is no data in the browser so when i save this one see now all the information whatever we submit here so all the information will be will be shown in the browser browser url first name teja and last name live tracks and country india message teja live tracks okay clear so using get method we are able to see whatever we submit so for suppose if we are having the password field so if we can enter the password now see i have another thing is called so input type password so now you can see enter your password okay so now you can see so i'm saving so first it is asking this one live tracks so then so test at 1 to 3 i'm giving the password now you are unable to see this one okay i'm choosing the india so then test message okay now when i submit this one now you can able to see first name is teja first name is teja last name live tracks and password is where is password sorry so i am giving the both the names are same so that's why it is coming password okay so then he, you can see test yet 1 2 3 i am giving then that one also it is displaying in the browser it is displaying in the browser our password also displaying in browser okay then country india and message is test message okay so this is this is the use of get method we are able to see whatever we are submitting the data into the back end application we are able to see all those data into the browser information so then we are having another method called post method method equal to post okay now you can see so here this one so i am using another tab so then now you can see so first it is asking validation page a live track so then abc okay so then india message okay so then i am submitting i am saving this one see you are unable to see form is submitted but you are unable to see anything in the browser okay so that is the use of post and get method so get method is always displaying our data into the browser post method securely transfer to the back end application okay so that is the difference between the get and post okay so the method attribute specifies the http method okay http methods then so we are using the get and post to be used when submitting the form data the get method is the default method when you submitting the form data post method we cannot see the difference between the get and post method so okay so most probably for all the application they can use only post method because of our data cannot leak is the browser 
so it won't show into the browser so whatever we are submitting so that data we cannot show anywhere okay for example so if you are going to the internet so then their bank application their login for the their login form they can use the get method so you are trying to you you are trying to submit a username and password that username and password so user user saves that history so then when after that some someone is came and they can, uh, he can try to check the history browser history so then your banking username and password can easily see okay so that is the purpose for all the all the forms they can use only post method okay so here we are having some differences so data pass so limited amount of data only allowing in get method get method can access only can allow to submit the backend application only limited amount of data but using post method so there is no limit so we can transfer large amount of data then security coming to security get request is not secured because of our data sent to the sent is a part of the url and this data saved into the browser history okay post request is not is secured because of our data is not exposed in the exposed in the backend uh, browser url okay so then bookmark so when someone able to bookmark your urls after saving your username and password into the browser request cannot be bookmark if they can bookmark they cannot able to see the username and password in the post method okay usageability get method should not be suitable when you are sending the sensitive data when you are sending a sensitive data or secure data get method is not preferable okay so post method is preferable because of it is a secure okay using get method we can we can submit the 2048 characters only using get method we can submit the 2048 characters only but using post method there is no restriction we can submit so large amount of data to the browser okay so we can transfer large amount of data from using post method okay so then when we use the get method it is easier to have but it is difficult when we use the post method okay so when we use the post method so this is the differences between the get and post method so then this is the today's class if you have any doubts you can ask me so then remaining things we can discuss tomorrow okay so do you have any doubts so share me ppt sir yes yes now only i can share okay sir okay okay, sir. okay then fine thank sir. you क्लास okay for all okay. these html all these html i can give you the task okay 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 then fine fine then thank you you can connect tomorrow